Hi kids, I'm Michael and today we are going to be talking about colonialism, economic repression, and policing. There's a lot going on outside right now, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time, okay? So we're not even going to stray too far outside of our bubble. We're not even going to go to Jamaica. We're not going to go to Ghana. We're not going to go to South Africa. We're going to keep it right here in our Hamilton, the musical AP US history bubble, plain and simple American history. But we are going to talk about colonialism. We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna talk about black people. Sorta. Today's story takes place in our favorite example of colonialism, friends, and that is the 13 British colonies, not American colonies, British colonies. Yes, we are going to be talking about the American Revolution, but we're gonna take a little pause, okay? We're gonna start just before the American Revolution. Now, we have to understand <laughs> why our good friends in the British colonies decided to completely overthrow their oppressors. So the American Revolution was all about taxation without representation. So people had their money and their time extracted by a system that consistently did not benefit them for years, decades. I know that doesn't, that's not familiar to any of us here. All right, but more than taxes, the American Revolution kids was about policing, all right? And who did this policing? Well, it was the British colonial officers who were walking around just policing everybody, just like your regular neighborhood police today, okay? So what you should know, if you bought or sold anything, anything in the British colonies, that meant that you had to pay a tariff, okay? Because if you bought something or sold something, it had to be imported from another place within the British Empire. And the British was trying to make a profit on those popular goods. Okay, so if you wanted something that the, the British Empire did not offer, you had to what? You had to smuggle it in from another merchant ship from probably a different empire, like say Portugal. And what did people want? They wanted things that they wanted now. They wanted wine. Okay, they wanted tea and we're, oh, we're gonna talk about tea, my friends, in relation to policing and colonialism and economic repression, don't forget why we're here. So one of the most famous illegal smugglers, oh, let's call it dealers, okay? One of our most famous dealers in American history, John, Hancock. John Hancock was running these colonial streets, friends. For the British, Mr. Hancock was a criminal, period. Smuggling wasn't a big deal for the British. They generally turned a blind eye to smuggling. The dealers, John Hancock and all his friends, they were seen as local heroes because they basically saved the local economy. They created an economy for the people who were left out of the mainstream British economy. So the British did not think that the colonies were the best places to be, right? From Great Britain, they looked down at the colonies. They looked at them as a bunch of lazy, sketchy hustlers, right? One British officer called the colonists a bunch of lawless, piratical people. That sounds familiar. I don't, I don't know why. Anyway, it hit the fan. The British went to war with the French and the natives, and then the war ends. They lose a bunch of money. And now the British Empire has to figure out how to make back that money, how to regain their capital. So King George, he decides to crack down 
you guessed it, on those tariffs, right? Just like how, say, I don't know, a neighborhood like Ferguson, Missouri might crack down on traffic tickets to increase city revenue in the 21st century, but I digress. I'm gonna try not to do that anymore. Back to the story. So the British cracked down on tariffs, so that means they had to crack down on law enforcement, my friends. And soon they started giving the police even more power. And this, this part is gonna shock you. This part is gonna be bonkers. The police, started to abuse their power on the colonists. Shocking, shocking. The British officers would at random stop and frisk local merchant ships at random and claim that they were looking for illegal goods, right? They even brought in outside agitators from the military. The, who would do that? Now, kids, the British, they had laws against these type of privacy invasions. Don't get me wrong. They did not have the Fourth Amendment yet. We created that. However, they had something called the Castle Doctrine and British officers needed warrants or rights of assistance before they say, barge into somebody's house and kill them in their sleep, right? But then again, I digress. Uh, the colonies did not have equal protection under the law like their British homies across the Atlantic, um, even though they were British citizens, even though they paid British taxes. So the people in the colonies started protesting, y'all. They protested, they sued, and many, many non-peaceful rioters started destroying property. Some deviant criminal tea dealers in Boston who were mad about the cheap imported British tea because that was messing up the underground tea competition. They dumped good, peaceful, legal tea into the Boston Harbor with Zero respect for the law, okay? In the colonies, law enforcement was arbitrary, abusive, and awful. That's three A's in a row, and I'm not even in the Bay Area. It was almost as if there was one government, but two nations. One being used for profit, hyper-surveilled, and brutalized at random, and the other who was not, and oh, what, what, what is this? What is this West Indian decolonial theorist? France Fanon, France Fanon, you're not, you're, you're not relevant for another 200 years. What, what, what are you doing? I told them we're not, we're not going to Africa today. You're supposed to be in Algeria. Well, Fanon, while you're here, could you give us some, context for what was happening in these American colonies? Sorry, British colonies? Oh, right. That's right. You can't respond because you died of leukemia almost 60 years ago. Okay. Tell you what, Fanon, I'll read for you, okay? Cool, 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 cool. Fanon wants us to know that in colonies, the official legitimate agent the spokesperson for the colonizer and the regime of oppression is the police officer or the soldier. The government agent uses a language of pure violence. The agent does not alleviate oppression or mask domination. He displays and demonstrates them with clear conscience of the law enforcer and brings violence into homes and minds of the colonized subject. Wow, Fanon, I know you have a lot going on and there's probably a lot of people talking to you right now. So I'm gonna let you go, all right? Thanks for hopping in. This, this, is, this is great. I didn't even know you were gonna be here today. And all of this was because the colonies were trying to survive. The people in the colonies were trying to make what little money they could within a system of predatory 
exploitation and economic exclusion. So what did these contraband dealing, sketchy, radical looters do? Well, they revolted against the officers, they tarred and feathered them, they stole their goods back from the police, they harassed the police as they tried to just do their job. In July of 2014, the NYPD murdered Eric Garner for selling cigarettes. Um, moments before his death, Eric Garner said this, every time you see me, you want to harass me. It stops today. After years of exclusion, brutality, and colonial repression, the members of the colonies joined together and they did what, y'all? They revolted. Black Lives Matter.